Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. This is Nitin here. Today I have come up with another very challenging problem in physics and its name is oscillations of a charge ring in its plane. So let's uh, discuss the statement uh, of this problem and the concepts related to it. So here is the statement and the diagram of the problem and it's a quite challenging one and uh, quite different from the regular uh, problems which are uh, there in the textbooks okay so this question is uh, actually a modified uh, version and then i have added uh, you know, two different uh, questions in that so i'll just explain you that part also here uh, a uniform charge ring of mass m naught and radius r naught is placed on a smooth horizontal surface the total charge of a ring is q naught uh, a small point charge of mass m0 and charge q0 is placed at the center of the ring. The particle is displaced by a very small distance of x from the center of the center in the plane of the ring and it is released. The ring is not fixed and free to move on the horizontal surface. Then you have to find out the time after which particle return to the center again. And second is the maximum speed of ring and particle during the motion. So the actual problem uh, will be where this ring will be fixed and this particle will be oscillated. So I have completely modified and uh, it, it becomes very challenging. And I'm going to tell you a trick also for this uh, question, how to reach uh, the answer very quickly. So let's discuss. First is the concept part of this uh, problem. So in this concept here, first uh, priority will be to find out the electric field produced by ring in its plane. Normally, the standard way of uh, solving this question will be where we calculate field on an axis which is passing through the center and perpendicular to the ring at a distance of x. But here we are interested in finding field at all these points which are lying in the plane of the ring. So I am going to use Gauss theorem in order to uh, find out this field at this point P in the ring of in the plane of uh, ring. So this is the side view of the ring and you can see here this is the ring. And uh, here uh, we know the formula of uh, field at a distance of uh, T on the axis of the ring which is KQ T by R square plus T square to the power 3 by 2. So we are taking a very small cylinder. We are using Gauss theorem in order to find out field at this point P. So in this diagram, you can uh, see here, this is the side view and uh, this one is the, uh, we are taking the plane of the ring here and perpendicular to that, I'm placing this uh, cylinder. Axis of the cylinder is uh, parallel to the axis of the ring. So here, flux due to ring, is phi 1 and through this also by symmetry i can say it is phi 1 length of the overall cylinder i'm taking as 2t as you can see in both the diagrams so if somehow i can calculate this flux passing through the curved surface then i can find out the field at this point which is lying in the plane of the ring and it is at a distance of x from the center of it so here, since there is no charge present here, we can uh, say by Gauss theorem that total flux through this cylinder is going to be zero. So if I apply that, I can say 2 phi 1 plus phi c is equal to zero. So now this cylinder is very, very small. Both t and x, both t and x are very, very small compared to the radius of the ring. So flux passing through this part will become e into pi x square this e we are taking uh, we know the expression of uh, field along the axis similarly here through this part also it is going to be e into pi x square so i can write this field as uh, flux as 2e pi r pi x square and similarly i can uh, write for this by symmetry i can say since uh, this t is very small so nearly on this surface curved surface value of electric field is going to be uniform and if it is uniform i can write e times 2 pi x times 2 t this is the surface area of that cylinder curved surface area of the cylinder and total has to be zero so from here i'm going to get this ep ep value is uh, uh, on solving we are going to get ex by 2 t where e value i can substitute 
from this equation this is the value of e and uh, we will take that approximation also that capital r is very very large compared to t when i do that i get a very nice answer as uh, ep that is k q naught x by 2 r cube i'll request students to remember this result as a standard result because if you remember this result then any question where oscillations or field is uh, required in the plane of the ring becomes very very simple but please remember this is uh, valid only for a very small distance very close to the center only on those points it will be applicable and its direction is towards the center of the ring so if you know this result then uh, for you this problem is going to be very simple but actually it's a pretty challenging problem and uh, let's uh, analyze the motion of charged particle in the plane of the ring so when i displace it slightly when i displace this charge slightly here also we have seen the direction of field is towards the center of the ring so there will be a force acting on this charge uh, q naught and that force is q naught times field at point p so this i am writing and i am going to get this f is equal to k q naught uh, q naught by 2r cube times x and this force is acting towards the center so it will try to restore this uh, this situation that's what i have written here force is restoring in nature and second point i'm writing motion of both ring and point charge will be simple harmonic the idea comes because this force is proportional to x however we need to be very careful while finding the time period of it now after this i'm going to use analogy of a spring mass system and that makes it very simple you see here this force is uh, something times uh, x so this is uh, resembling the force of a spring that's the reason i'm using a spring mass system analogy so here calculation of time period and analogy with the spring connected to two masses so this system i can treat as now here you can see when i displace on the center of the ring on the ring force is acting in this direction on the particle force is acting in this direction which is going to resemble this situation and you can see here also force is going to be some number times x kx where k is the spring constant in this case and here here we are getting this force as k q naught q naught by 2 r cube times x so what is k naught is uh, similar to this this term all right now we know the time period of uh, this spring mass system which is going to be 2 pi under root of mu by k where mu is reduced mass system or simply you can say m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 i think everyone remembers this uh, expression of time period for this system so same logic i am going to use here f electric is uh, k q naught q naught by 2 r cube times x so this becomes my k effective which is effective force constant of this system so i can directly write here the time period is going to be 2 pi under root of m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 divided by k where k is this expression let's now move to uh, to the solving the two parts so first part is uh, the time after which particle returns to the center so once you are uh, giving this extension and uh, releasing them they will come back to the original situation after a time of t by 2 so here i can directly write the t value i know divided by 2 so pi times root of m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 2r cube by k q naught q naught this is the answer for first part so i hope you have realized how easy it is if you remember these uh, standard formulas that is uh, electric field in the plane of the ring and second is the spring mass system and if you can relate it to the spring mass system analogy then this question is very very simple you can treat it as a objective problem and you can solve it then second part is uh, slightly challenging not uh, very easy if you solve by electric force method it is going to be definitely a very tough problem challenging problem but again i am going to use the logic of uh, spring mass system so here when i give extension and i release it in the process when they will uh, the system will reach in their natural length or the spring will uh, reach in its uh, natural length velocities of the two masses is going to be maximum so momentum conservation gives me m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 but at the same time we have to remember the total x will be divided by 
into two parts one is amplitude of uh, m1 and another one is amplitude of m2 so sum of uh, x1 and x2 or amplitude of 1 and 2 that sum is x which is given to us in the problem so by using center of mass logic because net force is zero on this after release so m1 x1 is e is equal to m2 x2 and at the same time this x1 plus x2 is x when i simplify i i know the amplitude of uh, individual masses which is m2 x by m1 plus m2 and uh, x2 value is m1 x by m1 plus m2 so from here v1 max i can write as uh, a1 times omega or v2 max also i can write it as amplitude of two times omega where omega is angular frequency of shm which we have calculated above so once i know this then this question becomes very simple and now we are going to write the answers here directly v max is going to be for the ring it is going to be uh, here i can say a1 omega a1 value is this so m naught x naught by m naught plus m naught times omega omega value i have calculated from the time period uh, time period is 2 pi by omega so omega is known to me when i substitute this this is the answer i'm going to get for maximum velocity of the ring which turns out uh, turns out to be x naught which is the amplitude of combined amplitude you can say times root of m naught by m naught times m naught plus m naught capital m naught will come multiplied by k q naught q naught by 2 capital r cube and similarly i can write for uh, particle as well so this is going to be the answer for my final uh, uh, question here i hope you have understood this concept well and i'll request you again to remember the above said uh, results which we have derived that is the electric field in the plane of the ring and second is uh, try to learn this trick where due to resemblance of force to the spring i am converting this problem a tough problem into a very simple one where uh, standard results are known to us and uh, then we are able to solve this problem and it becomes very easy i hope you have enjoyed this uh, solution if you have enjoyed it please give it a like share it with other uh, students and teacher and uh, if you haven't subscribed my channel please subscribe it thank you i'll come up with another very amazing problem very soon thank you very much